Hey, if you're someone looking to skill up and improve your life in business, then you have probably struggled with this question. What are the best skills to focus on in this economy? And that's a great question because as somebody who's a lifelong learner himself, I've asked myself that question many a times. And so I did you the favor. I dug into it a little bit. I did some research and I came up with a solid conclusion. There are two skills that always surface to the top when we ask these questions. And these two skills are going to be relevant for anybody, regardless of if you're looking to start your own business, create a little side hustle for yourself, or if you're looking to jump into the workforce in a traditional sense and work a nine to five. And these two skills are sales and coding. Now, for the purpose of this video, we're going to use coding as kind of an all-inclusive term. It means anything that has to do with software development or programming. So that would be your software engineers, your programmers, your coders, and it even extend into your data analysts and your data scientists. So with that being understood, which one is going to be better for you? And I know that you're asking yourself that question. So in order to answer this question, we are going to have to taper take a deeper look into these two skills and walk away from this today with at least a general understanding of the similarities and the differences between the two so that you can start narrowing down your focus. We'll start with some specific reasons why these are the two most in-demand skills in today's economy and then we'll move on to some of the key differentiators so you can kind of narrow down which is going to be a better fit for you in your career path. So first let's look into why these are hot. First thing is money. That's going to be the first and most important decision you're going to make when it comes to your career is what kind of money can you make in these fields. And both of these fields can give you a substantial amount of income. You can make a good earning on these two fields. So coding you could snatch yourself a salary in, you know, six figures even starting out depending on the company and the industry. Now with sales, it's always been and it always will be something that is going to give you unlimited earning potential. And even in some of the hotter fields like technology and finance, that income potential is even going to be more just because they have a tendency to pay a little bit more aggressively. But with sales, you can earn well into six figures and beyond if you're really good at it. Next, we're going to take a look at your barriers to entry. Now you can break into these, these two fields with minimum barriers to entry and there's you know, only a few exceptions to this, but both of these fields do not require any expensive college education. Now, there used to be a time when coding related jobs were hard to get to and you had to go in and get some type of formal education, either with a computer science degree or something like that. But we're well past that now with all of the information that's available on the Internet, all the tutorials, the online courses, these boot camps. Um, it seems very acceptable within the industry now that you could be a self-taught coder or engineering or programmer, or whatever you want to say, and still enter into this field with a pretty significant salary to start off at entry level. Now, that's not to say that you don't need some skills because you do need some experience, some type of portfolio. But what it means is that you don't necessarily have to spend the tens of thousands of dollars that you would through a traditional education to obtain those skills. You can teach yourself for a fraction of the cost sitting right there at home on your computer, the same computer that you're looking at this video on, go in there, get some online courses, do a boot camp or whatever, and you can teach these, yourself these skills from the comfort of your own home. Sales, on the other hand, has always been an area where your, your ability is going to speak for itself. Now, with a little persistence and tough skin, most people can be taught the skills needed to become a successful salesperson. The biggest barrier for sales is, always has been, always will be, the fear of rejection. If you have a fear of rejection, if you don't like people telling you no, then this isn't going to be a good career trajectory for you because that's just the nature of the beast with sales. If you have tough skin and that doesn't bother you, you can get over that, then you can learn all the other skills to become successful as a salesperson. Number three is going to be the outlook for long-term growth. Now, both do, of these fields do have a very positive outlook for long-term growth, even in a bear market, because let's face it, we just touched the surface on what's possible through coding and software. And so these technologies are being adopted more and more frequently. And so it's going to keep growing in years to come. And sales is always going to be a key driver for any business because if you have products and services that you're trying to sell, then you need to have somebody to sell those products and services. And if you're not selling products and services as a business, 
then what is the business actually doing if it's not selling anything? So sales is always going to be needed in any type of job. Now, finally, both of these skills are going to have a wide range of practical applications. So they're both going to offer you some type of freedom of choice. Whether you're looking to start your own business, whether you're looking for an opportunity to work remotely from home, go into the office at work, or if you're looking to get on the ground floor at like a startup company, or if you're looking to establish a more traditional nine to five with a larger institution or a regular size company, then those options are going to be available for you on either one of these skills. So those are some of the key similarities to both of these fields and why they're the hottest skills to learn in the economy right now. Let's take a look at some of the differences between them. First of all, you gotta look into the personality types that's required for each of these jobs. Because I truly believe that anyone can learn the skills to do each of these jobs. But learning the skills is different than you being happy doing the job once you learn the skills because they are going to be very different. Coding is gonna require somebody that likes sitting in front of a computer, doing typing, looking over technical things, very isolated, kind of one-on-one, -on -one. it's you and the computer most of the time. You also have to have a curious mind and be willing to continuously learn because as technology advances, there's gonna be new languages, there's gonna be new processes, there's gonna be new technology that you have to learn in order to stay relevant, in order for you to have a sustainable career in technology. Sales, on the other hand, is going to be something that's going to be a lot more interpersonal, a lot of communication, a lot of negotiating back and forth, talking to other people. You're going to have to have the ability to stay optimistic even after getting rejected time and time again with a lot of no's on a daily basis. And so there's people that have a certain type of thick skin that are those that succeed and are happy in sales roles. And if you don't have the thick skin, if, that's, if you're not that type of person, then you're going to be miserable in a sales job. So there's no sense in even trying to dip your toe into it because you're just going to be miserable. You're not going to be happy. And in my experience, there's going to be very few people that possess both of these skills. There's not many people that like being out there that are talkative, have good intercommunication skills and like talking with people as much as they enjoy being in front of a computer, looking at financials and analytics and typing all day long. But there are those, and if you do possess both of these skills, then you're going to be well positioned to be in the top 10% of earners in the world. In the words of Navav Ravikant, learn to sell, learn to build. If you can do both, you're unstoppable. Another thing to look at is the income consistency. Because in most cases, people that are in coding or software development or what have you, they're going to be earning some type of set salary. Now, there's going to be an exception to those that go with the freelance route or the entrepreneurial route for obvious reasons. But in most cases, you know, software development, you're gonna be working for a company and that company is going to offer you some type of salary that's gonna be paid to you weekly or bi-weekly or whatever. And it's gonna be consistent so you can expect the same type of thing week after week or paycheck after paycheck. Sales, on the other hand, is going to require a lot of budgeting um, because in most sales roles, it's going to be performance-based. So your performance is going to fluctuate between periods that could be month to month or quarter to quarter, however they pay commissions. But your commissions are going to be representative of how good you did in sales. And the best sales people are always going to have fluctuations in this income. There may be periods where you have great success and you're getting a lot of commission. And there's going to be periods of time where you just run into a rut and you may not make anything or a lot less than what you're used to receiving. And so they're going to come in spurts. And so you have to be able to juggle and manage your money and be able to stash away for when you have those tough times. And it takes a certain person that can actually handle that budgeting and that stress. The other thing to think about is the industry reach. Generally speaking, sales is going to have a much broader reach of industries that companies are going to be seeking sales for us because let's, let's face it, I mean, every company needs some type of sales, whether it's your mom and pop store, your know, local retail shop or the major conglomerates and technology companies, they have team of salespeople that are going out selling their products and services. If you're a business, you need somebody to sell your product or your service. Coding, on the other hand, is going to be a little bit more limited. Now, mind you, we've come a long way. There's a lot of companies now that are including coding and software development in, into their, their job force. But, you know, it used to be reserved for just the tech companies. You know, we all familiar with the FANG. But your, your food and beverage companies, your hotel companies, even finance companies now are bringing in 
teams of analysts and software engineers and software developers as they're building websites and customer interfaces. And so it's getting more and more reach into different industries. So you're not as limited as you once have, but sales overall is going to give you a more general approach. Other thing to think about is job security, because it's worth mentioning that when it comes to tougher economic conditions, good salespeople tend to last longer when it comes to companies choosing who they're going to cut and downsizing and layoffs. Now, keep in mind, I say good salespeople because if you're not a good salesperson, then all bets are off the table. But good salespeople are those that are bringing in revenue. They're going to stick with the companies longer. The companies are going to value them because they're going into the bottom line. When they're looking at their balance sheet and they're trying to decide where they're going to cut costs, they're going to be looking for where there's duplicate admin efforts or replication of duties. And they're going to cut those that are not income generating units of the business first before they going into sales. If they have to dip into the sales pool, they're going to dip from the bottom of that barrel, those that are on the lower performing scale. So if you're a good salesperson, chances are you'll be able to weather the storm a lot better than anybody else. And I mean, let's be honest, if you're a company that's struggling with this balance sheet because you're not making enough money, sales is not an area that you want to cut because you want to focus on getting more sales. And so chances are they're going to want to invest heavily, but they are going to have higher expectations of those that they keep around. So if you're good at it, you're going to be well positioned for that. The working environment as well is going to be different depending on whether you go into the coding or the sales fields. One of the big differences is going to be this work environment because just by the nature of coding, it's going to require you to be in front of a computer. Like I just don't, know how you could code or develop software without actually having a computer screen in front of you to look at the code or the software or the charts or do the analytics. You're going to have to have a computer in front of you. You're going to be staring at a screen most of the day. Now, I know there are a lot of videos on YouTube on the day in the life of software developers or coders or what have you. And they'll show you that there are other things that are involved in our day to day. There may be teams meetings or meetings or stand ups and things like that. But the bulk of their day, the bulk of the work that they're going to be doing is in front of a computer by themselves, hammering out what they need to hammer out. Right. Sales is going to be totally different with sales is going to require a lot of communications with people. And so whether that's telephone, email, or out in the field, most of your functions, most of your tasks are going to involve being able to reach out, talk to people, develop relationships and network. Now there are sales jobs that are strictly 100% out in the field where you're expected to be out in the field all day long, you know, banging on doors, going into businesses, meeting people and trying to get leads. There are other sales jobs where it's strictly phone based, where you're making, you know, 200 phone calls a day. And then there is, there are those that just have variances between what you do. You may have to send some emails, some phone calls or what have you, but ultimately your task is going to be talking to people more so than staring at a screen, but your satisfaction is going to be dependent upon whether you like either one of those types of situations where you work. So that's just a quick comparison between coding and sales. Hopefully this is going to give you some things to chew on as you're looking to skill up and improve your life and your business this year. You know, certain things to consider where you need to focus. Really, I encourage you to dive in. I truly believe that you can't lose with either one of these. It's just going to be a preference as to what you like. If you're somebody and you know you're not going to enjoy getting hung up on, being told no and being rejected all the time, then sales is not going to be a good feel for you. On the flip side of that, if you're somebody who doesn't just like sitting, staring at a computer with no interaction with people most of the time, just staring at the screen, then maybe coding or software development is not the field that you want to focus on. But I encourage you to give it a try. Dip your toe in. The good thing is that if you start one of these paths and you realize that it is not for you, it's easy enough to change course. Start learning what you need to learn in the other fields so that you can set yourself up for success going forward. So I hope you found some value in what we discussed today. If you did find value, make sure you go and do me a favor, hit that like button. That way YouTube knows that there's value in this video and they can share it with more people. And if this is something that you'd like to see more consistently, make sure that you join the team, subscribe to my channel. And if you're a lifelong learner and you'd like to follow me on my journey, then I encourage you to go ahead and sign up for my newsletter. The link will be down below. My newsletter is where I share my weekly insights direct to your inbox, share you all my successes, my failures, all the projects I'm working on. We can have a good time, build a community together. As always, I'm your boy, Paul. It's been a pleasure sharing this journey with you. I hope to see you along your journey. Take care, guys.